<laughs> welcome to Bonnie Mills. Yes. Yeah, welcome, Bonnie. Thank you. Thanks on, for joining uh, us. Podcast Testify. Thank you. It's pretty for cool. Having me. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty cool. Um, you had 10 little minutes. Yes. Um, Just question as much. <laughs> yeah, it's so small. <laughs> yeah, but it was But good. it's still it's yeah. still good for people to think, oh, okay, I can sort of connect a bit more. Yeah, that's it. And um, and like, now we've got a bit more time. Yeah, and yeah. such an opportunity as well just to be able to testify it's that, cool. man, what God's done and, um, Come on. yeah, there's yeah. like heaps to choose from. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's definitely an awesome opportunity and nice to be here as well to maybe elaborate a little bit more yeah. on a couple of things. And we've yeah. had your amazing husband in. Yes, already. he is pretty amazing, isn't he? Is. He? <laughs> he is. He's an awesome Yeah, man. he's wonderful. Um, yeah. I listened to his uh, maybe about a week ago. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was just, yeah, just like nice. Um, I think hearing like his perspective on how we got together and. Yeah. Um, how far off was he? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just, no, well, I mean, like we have two, um, like the same things happened. Yeah. Um, but it was just so lovely hearing it from his point of view again. And, oh, man. Um, yeah, he's. Pretty wonderful. He's a special know. dude. He is, he's a, isn't he's, he? Yeah, he's an yeah. Awesome guy. yeah. I definitely feel like I'm married up. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So how how is life at the moment? Like, what's sort of involved with life at the moment? At the moment, so we've got the business, the ice cream yep. shop. So Chris by the way, that Copenhagen. Eh? Yes. Copenhagen Surfers. Copenhagen, yeah, Copenhagen is um, Yeah, amazing staff. We were there on the Friday night. Yeah, six of us. Yep. And it was Claire that served. What's her name? Sarah. Oh, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't know she knew <laughs> us. Yeah. Well, she she comes to church with us. Yeah. Um, so she would have seen you probably from yeah, the front. And I'm, I'm and, not great with names uh, and faces mm-hmm. all the time. And when you were like, I know the meals. I want a disc. No. She no. Was. <laughs> no. I'm like, <laughs> I'm paying for this. Yeah. <laughs> and then she looks at me and it's like, No, you're not. Yeah. I'm like, Good girl. Okay. <laughs> Yes, I am. She's. I didn't get that way. She's pretty I tough. There. She's tough, man. I'm Sorry, like, Sam. I'm like, pass the F post machine over here. I'm gonna pay for this, and she's just like, no, nah. real, yeah, for reals. Oh. Yeah, she was awesome. Yeah. Oh, she that's is nice. Awesome. So it's yeah, Copenhagen surface. How long you been and had that for? Uh, we got it just before or just after maybe Nala was born, so she'll be four in December. So okay, almost cool. four years now. That's great. Um, That's yeah, a cool it has story been really itself. good. It is, absolutely. So Hubby and I met there when I was sixteen and he was twenty. Yeah. And um, he was a supervisor and I was really bad at my job. <laughs> <laughs> What were you giving I tried too many really ounces hard. of ice cream out? <laughs> I, love I, tried, it. I was just, I think, a really, like, fairly anxious, very wanting to please um, and just, yeah, made a lot of – I actually – the previous owner doesn't know this, but I set the shop on fire once. Oh, <laughs> yeah, wow. So, like, tell no us that story. <laughs> How did that happen? Yeah, so well, we have a cone maker. Yeah, which is pretty um, awesome. Yeah, so, <laughs> so um, but, like – flame um and i was out the back and some serviettes blew into oh wow and it sort of caught a light and there was a i think it was a i don't know a tourist standing there watching the whole thing unfold and i come out and there's fire so i was like i'll just be a moment and then i (laughs) put it out wow and then there was a pin um underneath the comb maker so i swept all the embers oh wow Unfortunately, yeah. pushed it back under the table, oh. went back out the back and came in and the whole bin, like a huge bin, was incinerated down to virtually nothing. Grabbed a bucket of water and there's like gas. <laughs> anyway, it was messy, but I kept my job. Wow. Hit no, the fact that it written, happened. Was it a written warning? He did, the, the previous owner doesn't know. Hopefully he's not watching this. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Knocking at your door tomorrow. So, covered for you. Chris covered is, for you. Well, yeah, someone someone did cover yeah. for me, actually. We got a new bin and just – although Chris probably did cover for me. So. <laughs> She's got great potential. <laughs> that was it. That was it. He was um, very well-meaning and That's very cool. patient. Yeah. So you've got two kids, right? The two kids, almost four-year-old, almost two-year-old. Awesome. And so life at the moment – 
very much revolves around <clears throat> them. Yeah, it is very full on. It yeah. is certainly a really big adjustment, I yeah. think, um, because your time is just around your kids, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because when Chris and I first got married, I was, I don't know, I've changed a lot over the years. And initially I was so, you know, I want to say like ambitious to just do crazy stuff Um preferably in God. Um, and I was like, you'll stay home with the kids and I'm just going to like work and like, you know, get a backpack and travel and preach Jesus. And <laughs> I don't know. I just, idealistic. but now, yeah. oh, super idealistic. <laughs> like, yeah. Quite. Chris is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, sure. initially he was like, yeah, I could fuck if you stay home, dad. But like now, um, <laughs> obviously like I think, with age and maturity, realizing like it's good for kids to be with their mum in those early years, like yeah, you know. I, think I mean, it's pretty good. <laughs> actually, it's not a bad idea. Um, and you know, it, like as it's probably been like a season in my life where it's been the most testing in terms of like simple Christian walk of like you know being slow to anger, patient. Faithful, oh, you don't always get thanked. <laughs> like, sure. yeah. you know, it's it's a hidden um, treasure season. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's but a it's really good way to put it. Um, yeah, it's probably uh, been quite sobering. I think yeah. for like the things in my life that really have value, and I think that um, ambition for like some great call, I can see now in hindsight, was very much rooted in probably me more wanting to find worth and value and do something big for God than... Yeah. Um, good, eh? <clears throat> oh, yeah, I want it to be a famous preacher around the world. S- like, it's yeah. like... Sammy and I spoke about this yesterday. We were walking and we say, literally this conversation, isn't it interesting how when we were younger, the desire to be famous, to be someone is really strong for most people, you'd mm. say, eh? Hey. I feel uncomfortable 30. being seen. Um, <laughs> On my wedding day, we left early because I just didn't like being dressed in white, the only person in the room. Like, so really? actually, yeah. How old were you? I had just turned 20, like five days before. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, but for me, it was about like, I would read what I, you know, what you do in scripture, like these radical things. And yeah, I was like, okay. a life worth living. Yes. And I didn't want to. In some ways, I didn't want to waste my life without recognising that actually, you know, when you come to Christ, your life belongs to the Lord. Mm. And healthy families change communities. Oh, so that nice. thing of like faithfulness in the home, being a good wife, being a good mum, being a good neighbour, um, you know, if that's actually what God is looking for from you, then it's radical faith yeah. like and faithfulness too which is a lot harder I think I was having a conversation with my dad um quite a while back and um he was saying he was talking about um how you know he thinks that um in a given situation if he had to lay down his life um he reckons he might you know under the right circumstances he might do it for someone else um and I just was thinking like Yeah, that's me. Like, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, yeah, these grand gestures that sort of like feel like there's some sense of nobility for myself in there. But then the day to day of like, oh, the mundane. Being slow to speak, (laughs) being, you know, like (laughs) preferring someone else over yourself Um. in the small ways and the ways that don't necessarily make you feel like a gladiator or a champion. Like, um, we all all want the. The Joseph ruling, yeah, you know, yeah, or yeah. The, yeah, the Apostle yeah. Paul planning churches. I you just forget their yeah. for me, like their maybe wilderness like missions or like somewhere in like you know you're helping people that um, their brokenness is maybe a lot more apparent because then your help is a lot more apparent <laughs> as opposed to you know in your local neighbourhood. Seeing yeah. the needs that are there that are maybe not as Here striking. I come. Like, I'm yeah. the saviour. Yeah. <laughs> it's I'm all about me. <laughs> yeah. It's so yeah. true, eh? It's true. But yeah. I'm really grateful for the shift um, in perspective. Ah, it's awesome. Because you can waste your life yeah. um, for a uh, selfish ambition yeah. that's sort of like kind of maybe camouflaged in 
godliness. This the um, scripture, eh? Lord, Lord, look at all the things I did. I did yeah. in your name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're also going to be left really bitter, and even if you do follow down that path, mm. and then that's got to end eventually, or maybe it doesn't. Maybe you chase that for the rest of your life. But uh, there's some point where I think you'd be. <laughs> You can waste your life, like you said, and be bitterly disappointed because you haven't mastered this, the daily task of just being whatever simple thing God wants you to be. Yeah, and I think faithfulness to Jesus doesn't like always look um, – it didn't for Jesus in his ministry. Like whenever his fame got too out of hand, he moved on. Um, you know, he wow. moved on to yeah, another region. Like he didn't – and he had reasons for that. Um, part of it, I think, was like because he was headed for the cross, which was um, humiliation. And if the Jews had their way, they would have forcibly made him king. Yeah, um, it's true. And so he just kept moving, only, basically only just making his way. Now. Yeah, not not 30 long. Thirty years of ordinariness. Yeah, but he was Hidden. making his way to the cross, which no one would understand or see uh. as being. Significant, yeah. Um, and yet, what he accomplished for us in like true sacrificial love, true laying yeah. down of your life, yeah. Man, you love the word, <laughs> eh? I really, really do. My husband, yeah. he called me um, a Bible nerd the other day, and I was like, That's <laughs> such a compliment. <laughs> I loved it, yeah. So it's I awesome, do. and you I can do. see it, you can see it. It's really, yeah. I'm learning though that, um. We need one another as the body of Christ. Like, yes, good. Um, I've got my particular uh, love for the word. Um, and I think with that passion, I think, like, comes uh, gifting and also uh, responsibility. But then also for people who maybe not, va- they don't value it in the same way exactly that I do. But there's other facets of walking out your faith, um, like worship, um, we were talking the other night, like just practical application, um, you know, community outreach. There's so many different facets. And I think realising that, well, I've got my one particular thing, mm. the tension that, you know, you get pulled on when people are different to you and they just love God, mm. maybe in a different way. Well, it's almost like Tyron, like before. Mm. He just wants to see people saved. Yeah. Mm. And then, like, he would introduce them to the Lord, pray for them. They'd get water baptized straight away. Yeah, you know, and he's like, "Man, this is awesome." It's almost like Bonnie's going to be so at the top good. of the beach. <laughs> Pass them on to Bonnie; <laughs> she'll take them, give them some word, and then yeah, you know, was, a bit further down the track. <clears throat> it's just that's it, the the beauty of the body, right? Just yeah, that's each, it. Each we part. need one another, like so um, yeah. incredibly. When when did that? Do you recognise when that passion for the word and for the Lord started? Um, yeah, I do actually. Um, I would say it was probably five or six years ago. I've always had a passion for the truth because in my experience at 16, having someone speak the truth that was maybe a difficult truth but, you know, tell me what it meant to truly follow Jesus, what it could cost you. What did the, um, what did the situation look like? I was... So you were brought up <clears throat> in church? No, not okay. in church. Um, my, my f- in South Africa, it's quite common for people to be Christian but not really in church. Like so Catholic they're sort of like, almost? No, no, not really. Sort of like um, I've been hurt by the church, so I'm not going back. Oh, okay. Um, um, that's but common But I really it's have. Common here. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I think to the point as well where... You know, like you could walk into a shopping centre over there and hear worship music playing. Really? Yeah, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. In like your local How cool is that? equivalent of Coles or, yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. it is cool. So, And there's a lot more, I think, respect wow. as well okay. from um, people, whether or not they, at least it was. I mean, I haven't sure. been back in quite wow. a while, but yeah. yeah. But yeah, so at 16, I'd... I was new to Australia. Um, so moved, oh, your yeah. whole family moved here? No, so my oh. parents separated and my mum was living here. And okay. I was in boarding school in South Africa. Right. So um, my younger sister and I just sort of reached out to my mum to see if we could come over. I needed a clean slate and wow. start. And so... She was like, voila. yes, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> girls. Cool. So, um, yeah, so we moved over and... 
I went to a youth camp later that year. Oh, wow. Um, yes, in Sydney. So, um, and this lady, um, Aubrey, got up and she just, um, she was preaching from that scripture about um, let your light shine before men that they nice. may see your good works. And nice. Glorify. Aubrey wasn't 20 years <clears> old. <throat> she was maybe just 28. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, okay. I don't think that she was too was much a- older. But, yeah, she... She went hard <laughs> in a good way. Like it was so confronting. And, and I had raised my hand at altar calls numerous times in church, like um, like in boarding school I would go to cell groups and youth groups and stuff and often respond to an altar call because in those moments I just remember feeling such incredible love from God. And I did... I wanted to be saved. I remember the first time at 13 um, hearing that, you know, like you have to receive Christ to be saved. I remember going home to my dad and being like, I can't believe you didn't tell me. Like, <laughs> uh, So I loved, I loved the truth um, and it changed my life. Like I was always someone I needed to know yeah. the why. I have to know the why. Please yeah. tell me the why. Help no. me understand because it would, I would say, result in repentance. So it was like at 16, it was the first time I would say I ever truly repented in the sense that I had previously like <clears throat> maybe regretted sin or been remorseful for it. But this was the first time I truly turned um, away from a life that was um, self-seeking Um and heading in my own direction to turning towards God and saying, well, what is it that you want? Mm. Like, what does it mean to... Follow up, <clears throat> surrender follow. to you. Yeah, wow. you know, and pick up my cross. And yeah. so for me, like, those early years were, like, hardcore about obedience. Um, so that was... Yeah. that You might have found that that could have been quite isolating for you. It was because we came back from the youth camp and I sort of like lived my week for um, youth and church then on a Sunday. Cause oh, so the camp was in Sydney, <coughs> but you lived up here? Lived here. Oh, yeah. okay, cool. So, um, and it was a really small youth, like yeah. not many people, but... Um, That's okay. Yeah, I went to Mary Mac High School, which was a huge culture shock. Yeah. Just because I think the schools in South Africa, the respect in that there is quite full on. Um, and, yeah, I just in that sort of last year and a half of high school got pretty shut down with, like, insecurity in that. Um, Mary Mackay. Yeah. <clears throat> I just – because I'd just become a Christian truly um, too. So it was sort of um, – yeah, it was just interesting. Yeah. Um, but – Quite, yeah. What year were you at Merrimack? I graduated 2010, I'm pretty sure. You didn't graduate, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, you would have been, you would have been <coughs> in year eight when I was there. Yeah, so I only did <laughs> half of year 11 and... Well, um, you were there for, 12. what, six months? Six days. <laughs> <laughs> and they gave me a free ticket. They said, you've done enough, son. <laughs> you ready for How'd the world? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get out. <laughs> oh. There were a few of those. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Yeah, I think, man, and that's probably like looking back on those memories, I can see, man, healthy homes, healthy kids, healthy kids, healthier high school environments. Well, probably not guaranteed. but Not guaranteed, but. They they have choice. Mm. They they understand um, healthier homes present another alternative to the choices they're yeah. presented with. And you're not, hopefully you're not, you don't have kids that are just operating out of lack and hurt so tremendously. Yeah. That like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because that's quite hard because, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so <clears throat> there was Mary Mac and mm. then around the same time that I became a Christian was when I started working with Chris at Copenhagen. Oh, wow. And it's funny, he always wanted his wife to come to his 21st and he invited all the staff and I barely knew the guy, but <laughs> a couple of people were like, you going to Chris's 21st? And I was like, yeah, sure, all right, I'll go. I'll go. <laughs> and that was the first night I met his parents. Oh, wow. Yeah, I still remember it so clearly because in South Africa, like, the polite thing to do is to introduce sure. yourself to... The parents of the person who's hosting. Yeah. 
So, yeah, I was like, is your mum and dad here? And he was like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> and so he introduced me and I was like, hi. Um, <laughs> I'm Chris's wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't have been able to say that to me even nearly then. Like yeah. right up until we pretty much got engaged. I was like, no, no deal. Don't even. No yeah. what? No. No deal. Oh, no deal. Yeah, it, yeah. Wasn't, it wasn't something. I never saw myself getting married really young. I... Um, Chris is probably not the person that I would have chosen for myself. Thank God <laughs> for his intervention. Amen. Because um, I more than likely would have ended up, I would say, divorced. Right. And either have been in like an abusive relationship or been very controlling and manipulative. How in crazy is that? Relationship. Eh? Yeah. <clears throat> and probably chosen someone who like hadn't fully grown up. And was like maybe still on games and I don't know. Yeah. So I don't know what that person looks like. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's good. I oh, mean it's like instead truth. of having a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I love games. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you do. Show me you got phone. a job? <laughs> oh, I do love games. <laughs> you got a job? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love games. Yeah. Hey. Um, hey. Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Chris Chris likes Monopoly. Oh yo, I'll let's go. Yeah, I'll yeah, smash let's go. What are we so, doing tonight? Yeah, uh, like seriously, back, like. Back. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're good talkers too. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, <laughs> yeah. I always lose. Polyconomy yeah. does. And Chris, oh. Chris, like, he's he's like pretty gracious, right? But when it comes to monopoly, I'm he's ruthless. Ruthless. Man. You're ruthless. Good. Man. He's like, a good man. Teach your kids, <laughs> teach your kids monopoly young. Yeah, yeah. My girls, Learn my girls were young when they were playing monopoly, and yeah. I would never go easy on them. No. <laughs> Never <laughs> ruthless. Taylor and I'm still like, hasn't nah. won again. <laughs> yeah. to this day, she's about to turn twenty. Look, that's when you're the bank, and you yeah. just start. To <laughs> yeah, I'm a cheat. No, don't do that. With start Christians. stealing from yeah, the no, bank. I've, I've yeah, cheated most. Nah, it's good. Yeah. It's a good family thing. We've always been gamers as a family. Yeah, like nice. monopolies and yeah. the board games. Yeah, I know what you mean about yeah. the other games. The yeah. <laughs> Have you played Poly Economy? No. It's like the Kiwi version of Monopoly. It's actually. Probably a bit better. Okay. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. We've got it at our place next time you and Chris are ever. Chris play. is from New Zealand. Yeah. I'm like, Come why on. have you not <laughs> so good. introduced me to this yet? Yeah. So good. Oh, um, uh, we love <clears throat> it's good for families. Yeah, that's so it. Yeah. our kids yeah. even still love games today. Yeah, it's so, it is so much fun. It's good for families, builds good about memories and games. Yeah, yeah. And I think yeah, just that yeah. thing of um I was talking to my dad again, um, just the other day and he was he said to me, he's like, you need to thank God for that man that you're married to. And I was oh, like, wow. yes, he I do. Dead. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's just. He's a good man. He is a good man. Yeah. He's just, um, yeah. God's good. God's cool. God's you know? Lord. God's good. He is so gracious, right? Like yeah. I remember um, finally getting to a point where I was like, okay, ready to be with Chris. Um, Because he had just been a really good friend, you know, for four years pretty much. Um, And he'd known, like, God had spoken to him that we were going to get married Mm. one day, I think. Mm, uh, A good few, yeah, a good two, three years before it happened. Um, And I sort of perceived that that's what he thought. And it (laughs) freaked me out because I was like, this is the one guy in my life that I know wouldn't pursue something or someone unless he was really Mm -hmm. sure that it was like, so I was like, I'm in trouble. (laughs) Um, But he was so, he was just a really good faithful friend. And I pushed, um, you know, kind of not to scare him off, but to sort of, it was a part of me that was like, you think that I am, like, I don't, you know, if you think that I'm going to, like, somehow I have to be this thing. Like, I wanted to know that um, I was free, if yeah. that makes sense, yeah. free to choose. And and it was good because he was just such a um, a good friend to me for so long, never, ever placed any expectation. And his love was just like a gesture of, you know, awesome. it didn't come with any expectations or it was just free. Like mm. he offered it so liberally mm. um, and patiently too. It wasn't overbearing. It wasn't manipulative or coercive. It was just consistent 
Nice. Isn't it amazing? I think you were both, you know, really beautiful people inside and out. You're both really incredible mm. and you're uh, you together as a team is, yeah. is awesome. But isn't it amazing? Mm. Well, I see a lot of young people probably, you know, at that age, at the age where you guys probably first met around that point, mm. um, make the wrong decisions. And I just think it's incredible how you didn't give in to your first desire that you sort of just chilled and let yeah, God work on you. Yeah, we had that conversation then, the other day. But then but because yeah. then I, th- it's in, I think it's great for young people to hear that mm. because what you thought you wanted as a young person is mm. clearly not what you actually wanted and what you yeah. needed and what is amazing for your life. That's so just I, so... I actually, I was looking at this um, just before I came in. Um, the scripture about delighting yourself in the Lord. Yeah. Um, and I never originally like knew what the um, the meaning and context was. Um, sorry, I'll bring it up because it's just so so. Like often I would have heard um, it preached in a way that was um, delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart, as in. You have desires that are in your heart, things that you most want, and God will grant them to you. But um, the scripture says, um, like it goes on to say, um, commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he will do it. He will bring Mm. forth your righteousness as the light. And so that scripture is really about like sanctifying the heart. When you delight yourself in the Lord, he gives you godly desires Mm -hmm. in your heart. He you, be, you begin to be conformed to the image of Christ. You begin to trade wicked desires of your heart for righteous one, ones. Mm. And <clears throat> it's something that happened, like, with me, honestly, like when it came to marriage and looking for the right person um, to be with was that um, probably I was never one of those girls at youth that, like, planned my wedding. <laughs> um, n- no offence if you do, um, but that just wasn't me. I was like, I'm going to get a backpack and a Bible and I'm getting on a bus and who knows where I'm going, but, you know, I'm going to talk about you. Like it was just not in my um, – I didn't think it was something that I wanted or needed. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Chris wore me down. <laughs> no. He, um, yeah, he was just consistent and he trusted God. He trusted yeah. God to show me, he trusted that God could speak to me. And um, he was very patient. So um, it just got to a point where I remember like a few months before we got engaged, just I knew at that point and I just remember saying to God, like, God, not my will but yours be done. This is not something that I want for myself. Um just being completely honest with God and it terrified me like but I was like if this is something that you want for me yes like I'll give you my yes and it's amazing like trusting God because I didn't have any romantic feelings for Chris yet he was just a really good friend but that so on the Thursday God spoke to Chris and said she's ready. On the Friday night we had a home group meeting where a few of the leaders um, in the church prayed for Chris and in that moment during prayer God just filled me with like so much love mm. for this man that like previously I was like arm's length, <laughs> you know, I really appreciate you but let's just, you know, I yeah, I didn't want to lead him on or anything like that and so um coming away from that experience just being like oh my goodness like this is something that I desire now it was like just happened and it was it came from a place of God like I'll trust you um and then on the Sunday morning I had had my last session of prayer ministry so like going past old wounds and stuff and um yeah Chris and I had a conversation where he just asked me, where do you see our relationship going? And um, I remember blurting out, well, we were always going to get married one day, weren't we? And so that's it. We got married like four months later. That's cool. Wow. So you were like 19 at the time. I was 19, yeah. <laughs> yeah, wow. That's yeah, great. Yeah, so, yeah. That's, that's so when you finished school, what did you do after you graduated? Um, so because I was technically considered an exchange student. Um, <laughs> 
for study purposes because I was South African. So, you, oh, because when you're 16, you're on a student visa then. Yes. Oh, not a student visa on my mum. So my mum's on a New Zealand. Um, oh, okay. Passport, so it was like a, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, on, New on Zealand her. is a weird. We just get it is. So it was, yeah. So I didn't really get any okay. um, study or anything. And coming from South Africa, I was so um, determined to study because that was basically a th- thing that you just were expected to sure. do and it, you know, gave you worth and value and significance. And I tried every which way. I right. panicked um, about it. And it's so interesting because it just never, ever really came to you. And yet, God, like, I laugh sometimes when I think about the fact that Chris and I were literally two hospitality workers who probably would not have been able to afford very well to have a bigger family like that's just a fact especially here on the Gold Coast with prices rising oh my gosh and then Copenhagen yeah. happened and it was just offered to us on a platter mind you like so you were <clears throat> so he was the manager he was managing it or he whatever. started managing it um just after we got married he was oh, a wow. supervisor okay. yeah so he was he would have been 24 but he d- he Oh, maybe he, no. He maybe was he there was managing for quite a long time. Yeah, he was there for a time. really long time. So he did study. Um, he didn't end up finishing his degree. He studied for I think about two years. Mm-hmm. Um, he was very involved in church. That was yes. kind of his primary yeah. focus for a long time. Um, and then he, when we came back from our honeymoon, he did a course in real estate mm-hmm. and was looking at starting a business um, in real estate and. We sort of tried that for about a year and Copenhagen had been offered to us before and um, we'd said no because we believed at the time that, like, God was talking to him about real estate. So it was just something that – and then when it was offered to us again and the business sort of, like, it just – we had to look at at the fruit. We had to look at what was happening. We were like, okay, we would be – like, at that point, the offer – become so sweet that we would have been fools not to So it. rum and raisin with chocolate sauce sweet. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> Where are we going the after owner this? <laughs> seriously, <laughs> mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. made us a really... So that was after, pretty much after you got married, after your honeymoon. Yeah. You thought of real estate, but then... Yeah, so we, man, we, we ate baked beans quite a lot during those <laughs> early years of baked beans and Coca Pops. Yeah, wow. Well, nothing yeah, wrong with Coca Pops. Yeah, it was, yeah. Ah, well. <laughs> now I'm like, oh, yeah. probably, probably yeah. not. But, um, but yeah, just like... Um, wow. It's amazing because, like, God did so much in those early years in our mm. relationship to do with, like, healing restoration mm healthy communication, because the background I came from and the background Chris came from was very different. And I would not say that I really had the tools. Um, That's why I say before, like, I probably would have been a devastating partner in a relationship or would have been in a relationship where I was maybe subjecting myself to just want to be loved Mm. at any cost. So... Wow. God is so good. He's faithful. How long have you had doing. Copenhagen then for? Four years. Wow. <clears throat> Come on. Yeah. So. So you were sort um, of chucked into helping Chris with that, like fairly early on too. Then. Yeah. So um, I left Copenhagen initially, yeah. um, right around the time when God first spoke to Chris about him and I getting married. Okay. I just I uh, got a job somewhere else, and I ended up like six months later being retrenched because the company went under. Right. Um, and basically, because I, I moved out of home at 17 into uh, my mom and my stepdad's, um, they had a place on Chevron, so my sisters and I moved in there. Um, and I just needed to pay the bills. <laughs> so um, I asked for my job back at Copenhagen and then... Um, that's when Chris and I, I'd say, built like a stronger friendship. Yeah, nice. Um, got married maybe two-ish years, years later. later. Um, we bought our first property in like maybe the first year of marriage. Again, total fluke. <laughs> God's provision, Come like on. not because of, you know, our own anything really. And then mm-hmm. um, 
we actually bought a second property like uh, maybe two, three years later and then we're pretty much handed Copenhagen. Wow. So it's just been like yeah. re- a lot of provision from mm-hmm. God. Um, that I want to say that's just in the area of finances, which, I mean, I'm sure we'd, like we know that's just one small part, but I think the areas that have probably meant the most to me is um, the healing and restoration. Mm. The, like you can come from um, circumstances that aren't ideal and God can do such a work of restoration and healing Amen. in your life that you can have a wholesome family. Amen. And you can do it well. Come on. Um, it's hard. Like repentance is hard mm. at times because you're relinquishing control and you're humbling yourself because you think you know what's right and you think you know what you're entitled to. But, um, man, God's way mm. is just so sweet. Mm. And... I remember in the first year of marriage, just I, I was completely blown away that I was married to this man that was so kind and wonderful and faithful um, <clears throat> that I like almost felt ripped off when we'd been married one year. I was like, where's the time gone? This is going too fast. Oh, I just so could not believe the goodness of God in my life so and how... Um, you know, it wasn't something that I pursued myself. It was something that he was, you know, able to manoeuvre, I think, as a result mm. of um, just being willing to be like, yes, okay. That's the key. When you said before, when you talk about your relationship, I think um, that the relationship aside and how you stepped into that and how you said this, you know, whatever the situation was, you'd look, it's not what I perceive, but God, like mm. your will, like whatever you want, I'll do. Yeah. And I think your life, where you guys both are, are a, a reflection of you both walking like that massively. Because why would God <clears throat> want to bless anyone financially or with any of that stuff if they don't have a, not not because he doesn't want people to have stuff, but if how much, how quickly could it ruin you having such nice well, that's, things? That's it. Like God is, he's rich in mercy, right? And his mercy towards you isn't necessarily giving you what you want, mm. when you want it and the way you want it. Like I think of the um, the two sons and how the prodigal son went initially to his father, essentially stomping his feet, demanding his inheritance. And that to me is like, yes, we have an inheritance in Christ um, and the work of salvation is so comprehensive that not only does he save us from the penalty of our sins, but he restores us, he yeah, heals us, yes. he redeems us. Like, it's so comprehensive. And there are, um, <clears throat> man, treasures in heaven. Mm. Um, all, all of the things that we hope to experience in, in this lifetime, that we covet in this lifetime maybe, um, will either be exposed one day as just being like fickle and foolish desires or they will be realised in Christ, you know. Um, even things like, you know, for me, like whether it's um, full healing and restoration or areas of my heart where I'm just like, I still feel lack in this area, Lord. I know one day that... Um, death for a Christian means new life in Christ and um, we're glorified with Christ. We receive a new body. We are no longer in the presence of sin. We can be face to face with Christ. So any lack that you experience in this life, it's a matter of time. And considering that your life is but a vapour, it's quick. You know, it feels long today sometimes. but Long days, short years. And he's with you. Like... That's the other thing. He's mm. with us now. It's Amen. not even just like this future expectation and hope that we have, although we do have it. Um, yeah, it's, he's with us today. Mm. So. Amen. Yeah, so good. Yeah. <clears throat> awesome. For in sort of wrapping up, mm-hmm. um, so we got a amazing young people in our community. Yeah. And I'm hoping mm. you know some of them listen to this. I know some of them do. Uh, for them potentially at the age of around 15, 16, 17, 
thinking about a partner or thinking about just a heart's desire. I, I want this. Yeah. I want this. And maybe it's being said to them by their parents or by other people, oh, you just got to wait, you got to be patient or oh, that's not for you or just whatever. Mm. Can you – word of encouragement? I think your whole story, what you've shared for some of them that can pick that up will be a jewel for them. But. I think that thing of um, – What's a, uh, where your treasure is or where your heart's desire is, there your treasure is or something. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Yeah, so I think the thing of treasuring God, like he is worthy to be treasured, um, infinitely worthy. And there's so much that we gain in relationship with him. But I think sometimes um, we can be one-sided in our affection, like um, we're looking for what we want now, 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 and completely miss the beauty that is Christ in front of us in, like, he is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And um, on the way here, I was thinking, like, um, we were created and made to worship God. And if you're wondering in life what your purpose is, it is that you were made to be a worshipper of God. That looks like different things for different people, depending maybe on your talents and your skills, but you were made, what, what's your purpose? You were made to be a worshipper of God. And if you try and um, find a purpose that is outside of that framework for your life, it, you, man, it's like you're just manipulating yourself or your body into like a warped position that you were never designed to fit or carry and that's why you feel so misplaced and so... Um, like, it's just not working. It's just not. Um, and the things of the world, like, you can get everything you want and it'll never be enough. Like, mm. yeah, you'll always true. want for more unless you get the thing that your heart was created to hunger for, which is for the Lord. And he is worthy. Like, um, he is worthy to be known. He is worthy to be loved. And he is worthy to be praised. Mm. And that, I think, um, I want to say, like, synergy that comes from a created people in right relationship with their God um, will change your life. Yeah. Like, come on. Completely. Mm. This is the mm. thing. It's like it might be small changes at a time, but what's it that people say like one degree, you travel one degree different for long enough and suddenly you're in a radically different Yeah, destination. your destination's way off, yeah. So if I want young people to know anything, it's that, Yeah, just God is worthy and he's sufficient and he ought to be our primary focus. I know if you're a young person and that's not, that's something that you've heard from your parents, it's hard. Yeah. Um, Doesn't sound appealing. It doesn't, but I like the thing is, and we've got to keep in mind as well that we ought to have an eternal perspective of things too. Like I remember Francis Francis Chan doing this epic. Um, analogy with a rope and it went yeah. on for ages and this yeah. little red bit here was sure like your life. Yeah. What you do with that life does determine very much that. But, man, just outside of that box for a second, God is enough. Yeah, yeah. He is yeah, worthy. Yeah. He is beautiful. He so is good. like it, even for all the things that we inherit, he is enough. Mm. Like, And I think that's probably something that I long to see in young people and whatever stage, whatever that you're in as well, is, you know, you can go through difficult things in this life and they might not ever necessarily fully be um, what you want them to be or you could experience crazy dramatic miracles. I've had both, but every day, doesn't matter what my life looks like, he is still infinitely worthy to be known and loved. It's awesome. Indeed. Very good. Bonnie, thank you so much for your time. Thank Love you for it. being thank here. Thank you for having me. It's very cool. And your family's a beautiful family. Thanks. And, um, yeah, yes. it's, we feel spoiled that you're part of the Chapel family. And that. I do want to say I'm really grateful to be here. Very cool. Like I, all the people that I've met. Amazing. Have just been just so remarkable and, like, um, mm. it's just... 
We were part of a very small church before mm. and I feel like a chapel because there's quite a lot of people. It's like being part of the wider body of Christ. It's beautiful, it's like, eh? mm. Man, there's so many people that so really many. love God and... Um, yeah. yeah, we were a part of a small church before as well, <laughs> and then it just and then that happened. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, you guys are an quality. asset to our hey, little man. community. It's brilliant. Yeah, awesome. God's doing yeah. something good. Yes. So yeah, that's he it. lets you find the treasure in yeah. the field, and it's yeah. it's precious. That's it. That's so, it. so thank you, thank, thank you, you Bonnie Mills.